Hello, today I'm going to talk about the SPI game, The Wreck of the BSM Pandora. As always, subscriptions are appreciated. So this is correlated to the other SPI game, The Voyage of the BSM Pandora. And this is basically after the voyage and it wrecks with some captured creatures in it. And you can combine the two in like a campaign game. There's an article I believe in the general about how to do that. But the uh, for the BSM Pandora it contains some creatures that are captured but it doesn't include all the creatures that are in the voyage of the BSM Pandora but you can develop those from the general article. So the Game design by James Dunnigan, graphic design Redmond A. Simonson, game development David Ritchie. Couple versions. This is the obviously the box version, like their bookshelf kind of narrow box versions. There's also the Aries magazine version. As you can see, mine's pretty well worn. Cover art is very nice. I I tend to like the ones that are not super modern looking but you can tell a lot of uh, a lot of creativity is put into them to make to really show what their universe looks like a lot of good detail in the ship it's capturing you know smaller creatures that are carried in the ship anyway it looks very interesting very well done so on these boxes they have these extra inserts which I from my understanding is um, from contributors, these these one pagers are tend to be on the back of the box because the box these boxes don't when they don't have images on the back. Sometimes they would have these one page inserts that give a sense of it. Gives you know sample counters, sequence of play, age range twelve to adult, one to five players. You can you can highly it's highly suitable for solitaire, which is nice. One hour, plays pretty quick. Complexity 5.2, again, Monopoly to two significant digits is 2.34. Not sure why they have that much rigor there. The wreck of the BSM Pandora, and so BSM refers to the biological science mission, so the wreck of the biological science mission Pandora simulates the race against time by the members of the biological survey team to repair their damaged spaceship before the ship's systems reach an irreversible and fatal cold shutdown. As the crew scrambles after tools and weapons, they confront the potentially dangerous alien specimens that have broken loose and roam through the corridors. From one to five players work separately or together to save their ship Includes um, by 16 game map, iron cover playing pieces, rules, booklet, and various playing aids. So some background here, what's going on in the rules and coordinate. Biological survey mission Pandora is in the process of exiting FTL mode. Ship has been out for some time gathering biological specimens in a dozen systems. Now her mission completed, Pandora is homeward bound. The five crew members and their specimens are stasis. The ship's computer is in control during the series of difficult and inexact jumps necessary to reach Kinshasa Kabsa. As Pantor enters FTL mode, the nearby blue-white Wolfrate star emits a powerful burst of near ultraviolet radiation. Pandora's computer has placed a ship too close to the pulse and results are catastrophic. All over the ship, electronic components are burned out. Systems begin to fail, first the primaries, then the backups. The computer's response is rapid, but inefficient due to the damage already suffered. Crew and specimens are brought out of some safely, others in various states of impaired functioning. In some cases, crew and specimens have failed entirely to exit stasis. Here's the rules we'll talk about in detail. 8-page booklet, black and white. 
on the back is playing aids that show you track the attribute to the players and monsters and this is what the attribute display is for and equipment capabilities charts so it doesn't come with a tray for the counters uh, but I like to use these GMT trays they work really nice you know they have a lid on them and it fits you know perfectly into the box a couple nice dice appreciate those unique kind of bigger SPI dice Hundred counters in the trays here. So here's the unique counters. Kind of laid out. I always like when they have the display and the the rules here, so we can talk it out. They're almost all unique counters, except the equipment status markers, which are shown here as green or red, yellow. There are several of those. And then you have crew members, specimens, and equipment. And crew members, for instance, you have the position and the name. So we have the commanding officer Stroff, GSO Squaling, SO Cupidus, Bio Chardon, and the MO Kelly. And they have the normal side and there's also a stun side. And then you have different system status markers. There's Power, power level, nav level, comp level, enviro level, and con level, and the flip side is the system down. Crew status markers. Again, the crew turn their status and flipped over it shows that they're down. The ship status marker up and then flip side down. These are airlocks and the flip side is a breach. The unique so the specimens are all unique. There's and they're defined by intelligence, aggression, impair shield, weight, port, and speed. And if it's shaded in red, that number is subtracted from the die roll. So with regards to those ratings, there's mother, mouse, Grendel, Golem, Typho, Chasm, Mary, Blind Pig, Fletcher, and Scrod. Those are the specimens. And there's several different weapons. Stun Bob, Stun Rod, and stun gun and the flip side is weapon indicator and then there's also a turbo laser various kits comp kit, bot kit, kit, med kit and the flip side just indicates kit and then there's the web kit rigs, armor rig and bar rig so for the equipment counters, the ratings for all these, there's impair, shield, weight, port, and repair for all the kits. And then comm devices, which is a tool type also. Scanner, scanner, dump com, com, com. Different bots again with the Imperial Shield Weight Port Repair Spec Bot, Emery Bot, U Bot, Recon Bot, Ur Bot, and Bot, and the flip side is a Berserk for them. And there's also the EVA Bot. And these are various pods. And some of these pods have the rankings of impair shield, weight port report, repair, some don't. So there's the con pod, restraint pod, one, two, and three. Specimen pod, nav pod, escape lock, and this flips as just a generic gets pod. Then there's a comp pod, 
land lock, power pod, survey pod, and X-lock. And then the ones of the ratings with values on them are door pod, main pod, bot pod, enviro pod, com pod, med pod, web pod, stage pod, and stasis pod. So that's all the counters. Here's the game map. It's a uh, you know thickish paper. It's 11 by 16 and just kind of folds once to fit in the box. So here's the the layout of the Pandora. You got three levels, and you know you see tubes and pods and you know the risers, internal locks. So this is where the movement happens. And then you have several different, you know, here's the equipment status display up here. Crew status display, ship status display, some tables of restart, impair, repair, reaction tables, the cold shutdown display, the tracker, and the attribute generation table. I like how it's done, it's very kind of bright and vibrant colors, and, but not too intense. I think it's laid out really well. Then we'll get into rules. Let's get into rules here basic procedures, sequence of play. The crew members take turns moving, discovering, and handling specimens and equipment. Specimens then react automatically to the actions of other units. Each game turn consists of one to five player turns and separate stun removal and cold shutdown phases. The player turn, step one movement phase. Facing player's crew member and any bots under that player's control may move between spaces and make discovery checks. Step two, reaction phase. Reaction checks are made for all specimens which could react to the facing player's units. Step three, acquisition phase. Facing player's units may acquire control of unclaimed equipment and pick up stunned units occupying the same space. Step 4 Equipment Phase. The phasing player's units may use and repair ship's equipment. Stun Removal Phase. The die is rolled once for each stun unit in the game. On a roll less than or equal to the unit's current stamina level if a crew member, or shield level if a specimen, the unit immediately recovers fully from the effects of stun. Cold Shutdown Phase. If cold shutdown is in progress, the cold shutdown marker is moved one space along the cold shutdown display. Play proceeds for any number of game turns until all crew members are dead. The ship is fully under control, or Pandora has reached cold shutdown. Victory is then assessed. Attribute generation. All crew members, specimens, and tools in most pods have a series of attributes expressed as numbers. All two attributes are fixed and are printed on the equipment status display and on their counters. Some pods have fixed attributes which are printed on the equipment status display and on their counters. All their attributes must be generated by a die roll. These include seven attributes for specimens, intelligence, aggression, impair, shield, weight, port, and speed, and the functioning levels of the five major systems, nav, con, comp, power, and enviro. As each specimen and crew member attribute display is generated, it is recorded on the attribute display. All attributes are determined by rolling one or two dice, depending on the attribute. The level of the attribute is the level shown after the die roll number generated for that attribute on the attribute generation table. All crew member attributes are determined at the beginning of the game. System levels are determined as part of the discovery procedure. The level of a system is determined whenever the pod containing the system is entered, not scanned, or in the case of decon or comp, when the comm devices controlling those pods, doncom and compcom, are used. The ship status display is used to record the current levels of major systems. The attributes of specimens are determined as needed throughout the game. Cases, crew members, stamina levels, and major system levels are the only attribute levels which can be raised above the level those attributes were at when generated. Specimen shield levels may be decreased as real combat, but may never be raised. Systems may be brought up to level 9 functioning as a result of repair or restart, and crew members may have their stamina Increased to 9 as a result of repair. Specimen attributes are determined by rolling two dice for each attribute as the attribute is needed. Intelligence and aggression are determined when a reaction check is necessary. 
speed when a unit attempts to exit a space occupied in, by an unstunned enemy unit, impairing shield when the specimen engages in combat, weight when an attempt is made to carry the specimen between pods, and port when the specimen is directed to pick up and move an item. The numbers on specimen counters are modifiers added to the die roll and generated. In addition to these modifiers, two is added to the dice whenever there are more than three players. Shaded modifiers are negative numbers. One die roll, one die is used in conjunction with the attribute table to determine crew member repair and weight ratings. Two dice are rolled in conjunction with the attribute table to determine impair shield, stamina, port, and speed ratings of crew members. Movement, general rule, the spaces are of three types, pods, tubes, and risers. Pods are modular work in living areas. Tubes are corridors which connect the pods. Risers are lifts providing physical communication between decks. Spaces are connected to each other by locks, which normally open automatically at the approach of a moving object. Locks do not normally inhibit movement. They do inhibit discovery and reaction. Procedure. Units move between contiguous spaces via locks at the rate of one space per turn during the individual movement phases, or in the case of specimen and berserk bots during the reaction phase. Contiguous spaces are defined as spaces of any type connected by, by a lock. Cases. Crew members are never forced to move. All movement takes place between contiguous spaces on the ship display. Units may move between spaces only via locks. Spaces on different decks are not connected except via risers. All risers are contiguous to each other, and units inside the ship may move from one riser on one deck to a riser on any other deck in a turn, in one turn. The presence of other units in a space may affect the movement of units out of, but not into, that space. A unit may leave a space occupied by an enemy unit, which is not stunned, only if its speed is greater than or equal to that of each individual functioning unstunned enemy unit in space. All locks are adjacent. All locks adjacent to a breach space are inactive. Inactive locks do not open automatically, and no movement is permitted through inactive locks except EVA. A crew member may scan a space instead of moving, entering it during his movement phase. The act of scanning a space involves physically looking through a viewport in a lock connecting the space between being scanned with a space currently occupied. A crew member who scans a space executes normal discovery and reaction procedures as if he had entered the space. The crew member may not move normally or via haste movement during the phase in which he scans adjacent space. Three is subjected, subtracted from the intelligence rating of a specimen when checking for a reaction to a crew member scanning the space occupied by the specimen. Only the EVA bot, units and rigs or space scapecraft Epithemus may move outside the ship. Crew members may move two spaces per turn by using hasty movement. A player must state at the beginning of his move that he is using hasty movement. Whenever a reaction check becomes necessary as a result of action taken by a crew member using hasty movement, both the intelligence and the aggression of the specimen for which the check is being made are increased by two. This increase applies only to reaction checks for hasty movement. Discovery and reaction triggered by hasty movement through a space not occupied by the crew member at the end of a movement phase is executed as if the space had been scanned. Specimen activity. Specimens move, attack, acquire, and abandon equipment automatically during the reaction phase as mandated by the results of dice roll on the reactions table. While the activity in which specimens engage is determined automatically rather than being within the control of the players, the activity as implemented is identical to that of the crew members. The specimen directed to move into a crew occupied pod, containing hull bridge, would be unable to do so because movement through locks in spaces containing breaches is impossible. When a direction cannot be followed, it is ignored and the specimens remain stationary and does nothing. Specimens may acquire, but may never use equipment. Discovery. At the beginning of the game, the location of all equipment and specimens is unknown to the partially impaired crew. They must discover this information by scanning or physically entering spaces. During this process, they may be detected by wandering specimens. When a crew member begins a game in a space or when 
A space is entered or scanned for the first time. The player entering or scanning the space makes a discovery check. On a roll of 4, 5, or 6, the space is empty. On a roll of 1 through 3, a number of playing pieces equal to the number rolled are immediately drawn from the opaque container, holding tools and specimens. These counters are placed in the newly scanned and entered space. If the space is a pod, the pod marker the space is turned face up and left in the space to identify its function. Cases, no matter how many times the space is entered, the discover process is used only the first time it is entered or scanned. Crew members immediately gain full knowledge of the contents of all spaces when control of the ship is established. The normal discovery procedure is executed for each space in any order chosen by the player whose turn is currently in progress. All discoveries are revealed to all players. Reaction. Whenever a phasing unit enters, occupies, exits, or visually scans a space containing the specimens, a, the unit may be detected by the specimen. A specimen, which detects another unit, will react to that unit in one of three ways, fleeing, moving, or making a kill attempt. Each of these reactions may be further modified depending on whether the number result on the reaction table, which triggers reaction is parenthesized in boldface type. Reaction checks are resolved during the reaction phase. Whenever there is a possibility that a specimen will react to another unit, the intelligence rating of the specimen is cross-indexed with its aggression rating on the reaction table, and a series of numbers is found in the resulting intersection. Each number represents a possible reaction, flee, move, or kill. A pair of dice are rolled. The specimen's reaction in the manner represented by the highest number in the series, which is equal to or less than the number result on the die. The result is applied only after after any other reaction checks have been made. All reaction checks take place during the reaction phase of the player turn in which they were triggered. All reactions are implemented during the reaction phase of the player turn in which they are triggered. Only phasing units may trigger a reaction. Non-triggering units may be attacked by reaction specimens executing a kill or a move kill reaction. Reaction table results flee. The specimen immediately flees the space by any available exit. If more than one exit is available, the die is rolled for each exit, and specimen exits via the lock, receiving the highest die roll. Any carried tools are dropped. If the number of the results is parenthesized in bold type, specimen flees normally accept that. Instead of dropping the tools, it picks up and carries any or all tools in the space not in the possession of another unit. Let its tools first. Moves. The specimen moves in space occupied by another crew member who triggered the detection attempt if they do not already occupy the same space, otherwise there is no effect. If the number for this result is parenthesized in bold type, the specimen moves in the same pod with the unit and executes a kill result. Kill, the specimen immediately attacks and attempts to kill one other unit in the space. If the number representing this result is parenthesized in bold type, the specimen makes a charge attack, i.e. its impair rating is doubled and its shield rating is halved for that attack. When more than one enemy unit occupies a space, the die is rolled to determine who is attacked. On a 1 to 3 result, the specimen attacks the unit with the lowest shield rating. On a 4 to 6 result, the specimen attacks the crew member with the lowest shield rating. Combat. All specimens and crew members and some tools have an impair attack rating, which may be used to damage other units. They also have a shield defense rating, which is used to protect against damage. The process of attempting to damage another unit is called combat. Combat may occur between enemy units, which occupy the same space during the equipment phase or reaction phase. The shield rating of the defender is subtracted from the impair rating of the attacker. The result is combat differential. If this differential is a positive number, it is used to resolve the combat. If the number is negative, no combat occurs. If combat occurs, a column is found in the impair table. The die roll number is crossed in with the combat differential column. Before applying the result, the attacker checks for damage. This is done by reversing the attack process, subtracting the attacker's shield rating from the defender's impair rating, and only as I as if a new attack were being resolved, with the original defender as the attacker. When checking for damage, a negative combat differential is treated as a zero for purposes of resolving the check. All combat results affect only the defender. All damage check results affect only the original attacker. Results are applied immediately and simultaneously before we resolve any other combat. Cases. Combat during the equipment phase is initiated at the discretion of the phasing player. The phasing player may attack during the equipment phase using his own impair rating or impair rating of any one tool in his possession. Similarly, when checking for damage, 
He may use his own shield rating, or he may use the shield rating of any one tool in his possession. Instead of attacking, the phasing player may use the tools in his possession in other ways, repair, scanning, restarting systems, etc., or he may remain inactive. He's never forced to attack unless engaged. Attacking during the reaction phase is mandatory for reacting specimens and berserk bots during the reaction phase. All specimens which have been directed to attack or charge must attempt to attack where possible. In addition, berserk bots must attempt to attack as if they were reacting specimens. The choice of defenders is man in mandatory attacks is determined by a die roll. On a roll of 1 through 3, the defender is a unit with the lowest shield rating. On a roll of 4 through 6, the defender is a crew member with the lowest shield rating. The shield rating used to determine the defender is the rating of the unit being attacked, not of any tools held or rigs worn by that unit. The unit can attack one and only one enemy unit per phase. All specimens and berserk bots are hostile towards each other and toward crew members and non berserk bots. Crew members are hostile toward specimens and berserk bots, but not toward crew other crew members. Non berserk bots are hostile toward the same units as crew members, but they may take no action unless the, under the control of a crew member. Only enemies may be attacked in any way except via the stun bomb. Only one enemy per phase may be attacked regardless of the number of enemies in space. Exception. The stun bomb affects all specimens and crew members, hostile or otherwise, not wearing rigs in any space which is used. It may be used against adjacent spaces by being thrown through a functional lock. Eden may be attacked only once per phase. All enemy units which are attacking a particular unit during the same phase must do so in one combined attack. All attacking units have their impaired ratings combined for purposes of combat resolution. They undergo damage checks separately. Combat results on the pair table indicate that the defender or original attacker in damage checks must lose the indicated number of levels of functioning or readiness. Losses in crew member functioning are subtracted from their stamina level. Losses in specimen functioning are subtracted from the shield rating. Losses in bot functioning are subtracted from the current readiness level. When a crew member's stamina level or a specimen's shield rating is reduced to zero, the crew member or specimen is dead. About which has its radiance level reduced to red is no longer functional until repaired. When two or more units engage in combat during a phase, they remain engaged until either the defender or all attackers are stunned or killed. They may not engage in any other activity. Units must attack one unit with which they are engaged during their reaction phase of specimens or equipment phase of crew members if such an attack is possible. The effects of tools may be enhanced by employing them in stun mode. Tools which have an that's next to him. Their impair rating may be used to stun instead of damage a specimen, or in the case of a stun bomb, a crew member, but not a bot. The impair rating of a tool is tripped, tripled when the tool is used in stun mode. Only results of two or three on the impair table affect a crew member or specimen attack in this manner. All two and three results are as stun results. A defender that is stunned may not move, attack, or use tools until recovered. The stunned unit is flipped over to indicate that it is stunned. It is possible to combine normal attacks with attacks involving other units using tools in stun mode. In such cases, the defender suffers normal damage of one, two, or three levels of functioning lost as a result of the normal attack. In addition, if the damage result is a two or three, the defender is stunned. Acquiring using equipment. Ship's equipment is of two types, pods and tools. Pod equipment is usable only by crew members who physically occupy or in control, in control of the pod contain the equipment. Tools are the portable equipment of the Pandora. They include weapons, kits, comm devices, rigs, and bots, robots. Tools are usable only by crew members who are in physical possession or, in the case of bots, control of them. Tools may be used for purposes of defending against an attack during any equipment phase or during the reaction phase. Tools may be used for other purposes only during the equipment phase of the player possessing them. The attributes of tools are always fixed. When tool or pod counter is acquired, two dice are rolled and compared with the list of possible results in the attribute generation table. If the tool or pod is at green, a marker is placed green face up in the box representing the, the tool or pod and the equipment status display. If the item is yellow or red, a marker is placed in the box representing the tool or pod and the equipment status display with the appropriate color in the upper half of the box, with an exception. A crew member may take possession of a portable tool or the functional areas of a pod 
occupies if he occupies the same space with a tulip pod counter during his exposition phase. When possession of a tulip pod is taken, the counter representing that tulip pod is placed under the crew member. The crew member may then use the tool or the facilities of that pod during any succeeding equipment phase. Tools may be carried by crew members and specimens within the limits of their port capability. Cases, crew members may never leave a space while in possession of a pod marker. Pod equipment is built into the bulkhead so may not be moved. Only unclaimed tools may be acquired. The number of tools which may be carried between spaces is limited by the crew member or specimen's port capability. All specimens and crew members and some tools have a port capability. The port capability is equal to the weight of tools, specimens, etc., which may be carried. Any number of tools may be in the possession of a unit during a reaction acquisition or equipment phase. Only a number of tools equal in weight to the port capability of the unit may be carried during a movement or reaction phase. Units which move during a phase must drop a number of tools sufficient to bring them in compliance with this rule before moving. Crew members may wear any one rig instead of carrying it. Worn rigs do not count against the wearer's port capability. Capability of rigs may only be employed when the rigs are worn. It takes one movement point to pull it out and remove a rig, and no other activity may be engaged in during that phase. One tool of each type may be used during a phase. There are five types of tools indicated by designation on the back of their counters, weapons, kits, common devices, rigs, and bots. Only one tool of each type may be used in a phase. With the exception, any number of bots may be controlled and used. In addition, the capabilities of the pod currently occupied may be employed. Units may not use tools for purposes other than combat during phases in which they are involved in combat. One capability per tool or pod may be used once during a phase. Some tools and pods have several capabilities. Only one such capability may be used per phase. The capability being employed may only be used once per phase. Specimens and bots may carry but not use tools. Specimens may be directed to pick up unclaimed, unclaimed tools or drop tools near position as a result of detecting and reacting to the near presence of crew members. The same is true of berserk bots reacting in specimens. When directed to pick up tools, specimens will attempt to pick up as many unclaimed tools as possible. So those are the smallest weight rating first. Crew members use the capabilities of tools in lieu of their own capabilities. When using the capabilities of tools, the tool, tool's ratings replace rather than augment the capabilities of the user. The crew member could, not, could use his own repair rating and say the port rating of a tool in the same phase without violating this rule. Repairing equipment. Some pot equipment and all tools may be in one of three radius levels, green, yellow, or red. Equipment in condition green is functioning at full capability. Equipment in condition yellow is functioning in an impaired manner and is subject to de degradation. Equipment in condition red is non-functional. Pots which are not shown on the equipment status display are always presumed to be in condition green. Once per equipment phase, a crew member may attempt to repair a particular item of equipment in condition yellow or red. The repair rating of the crew member or any one tool being used in the repair attempt is cross-indexed with the result of a die roll and the re a result is found. The result is applied immediately and the markers on the equipment's test display are moved to indicate the equipment's new status. Cases, equipment in condition yellow is subject to equipment degradation. Whenever any rating of equipment in condition yellow is used, the die is rolled. If the result is a 1 or 2, the item is degraded to condition red. Degradation takes place after tool use. Certain types of equipment in condition red are removed from the ship display. All weapons, common devices, and rigs which are in condition red are removed from the game. They are placed in the opaque container and may be drawn again. Bots, kits, and pots, potty equipment may be placed in condition red. They may be repaired. Bots in condition yellow may be berserk. Whenever a bot is first discovered and found to be in condition yellow, or is repaired to condition yellow, or when that but enters condition yells the result of combat, the die is rolled, and the result of one or two only, the bot becomes a berserk, flip the count over to indicate this fact, it automatically reacts in the same manner as a specimen. Berserk bots have an intelligence rating of nine and an aggression rating of nine. Berserk bots. To not roll for degradation like other equipment in condition yellow, berserker bots may be made non berserk only if reduced to condition red and then required to condition and then if repaired to condition green. Berserk pots, which are repaired only to condition yellow, continue to be berserk. Results on the repair table are given in terms of 
levels of readiness or functioning regained or additional levels lost. A number result is equal to the levels functioning or readiness regained in the case of crew members. This is the number of points added to the stamina rating. A crew member may never have a stamina rating greater than 9. Specimens may never have a shield rating higher than that which they began the game. In the case of equipment, this number indicates the number of readiness levels regained. A 1 would raise the piece of equipment in condition red to condition yellow. A 2 or 3 would raise it to condition green. A D result in the repair table means that one level of functioning of or readiness is lost. The repair ratings or equipment may be used only to repair certain designated functions. The equipment capabilities chart indicates what functions each tool or pod may repair. The repair ratings of crew members may be used to repair any functions. Equipment capabilities. Tools and pods have certain t special capabilities. These include the ability to make breaches, allow extravehicular activity, EVA, allow bots to be remotely controlled, allow scanning of adjacent spaces, etc. In addition, bots have the special capability to act independently under the direction of a controlling crew member. The capabilities of bots may be cases. The capabilities of bots may be employed by a crew member in control of them at no cost in equipment use or port capability. Bots are required in the same manner as other tools or via remote control. However, once acquired, a non berserk functioning bot moves to the player in possession of it at no cost to the player's port capability. Any one capability of a bot may be used during a phase at no penalty to the crew member's ability to use the same capability himself. Any number of bots may be controlled and used during a phase. They function just like one an extra crew member on your side except that they cannot move independently unless under remote control. Bots may be remote controlled from some pods. Crew members using the decon, scan, specadol, and crew pods may exercise remote control over bots from those pods. Only the bots listed for each pod in the equipment capabilities chart may be controlled from that particular pod. Remote controlled bots may move about the ship display and employ their capabilities as if they were accompanying a crew member. Remote control is broken when a bot goes berserk or is in condition red or when a controlling player is no longer in control of a terminal with a remote capacity. Remote control may be established or re-established only if a bot is on the map in condition green or yellow, non berserk, and not already controlled by another crew member. A crew member may use the scanner to scan one adjacent space during the equipment phase. Scanning of the scanner is conducted in the same manner as scanning during the movement phase. Scanning may be conducted in both phases. Use of the scanner does not trigger a reaction check. Crew members in rigs and or specimens in the spacecraft and the EVA bot may play extravehicular activity EVA. Units in EVA are moved across the ship display as if they were inside the ship, with the exception that movement between decks does not require the use of risers. Instead, the ship must be imagined as a three-dimensional entity stacked with A deck on top of B deck, which is on top of C deck. While in the EVA mode, crew members, specimens, and tools may move one deck up or down between pods with the same ship's number of symbol. Thus, a crew member in B3 can move to pod A3 or C3, or along the lock symbol to be 2 BC. While in EVA, the crew member is considered to be adjacent to all of these. Crew member specimens and tools may exit the ship via exterior locks or through hull breaches. X lock, land lock, and escape lock all contain exterior locks. Cost one movement point to one movement phase to exit the ship via an exterior lock or re enter via same. A hull breach is automatically open during the Equipment phase by any crew member desiring to open a breach using the turbo laser. It costs one movement phase to exit the ship via hull breach. Reentry may be accomplished by uh, hull breaches or open exterior locks. It costs at one movement phase. The escape craft may not enter or exit the ship through hull breaches. Uh, all hull breaches and locks remain open until repaired or closed from inside the ship. Only the EVA bot or the turbo laser may repel hull breach. The EVA bot does so automatically during the equipment phase. The EVA bot occupies the breach phase and is controlled by the player. The turbo laser may automatically repair a hull breach whenever a crew member is in possession. The turbo laser occupies the same pod as the breach during this, his equipment phase. Exterior locks may be left open or closed by a crew member, but by closing operation takes 
place only from inside the ship. Crew members not protected by rigs or by space scapecraft and specimens. Now in the scapecraft may not employ EVA. Specimens may be placed in the scapecraft but may never wear rigs. The locks between spaces do not prevent interior movement into or out of spaces containing breaches and are open locks, exterior locks, open exterior locks. EVA is permitted between space regardless of their status. Units in EVA do not interact with the units inside the ship. Units in EVA are considered to be in different and adjacent spaces for purposes of combat, detection and acquisition, but not discovery. Specimen handling. Specimens are hostile towards crew members, bots, and each other. Specimens may be neutralized in one of three ways by killing, stunning, or restraining. Some specimens may regain consciousness and be as dangerous as ever. Killing is accomplished by reducing a specimen's shield rate to zero. The specimen is removed from space. Restraining the specimen also removes the specimen from the game, but does not reduce victory levels. A stunned specimen may be restrained during any equipment phase in which the specimen and the phasing unit, crew, or bot occupy the same restrained pod or the spectral pod. The crew member may restrain the specimen by using the restraint capability of the pod. If the crew member chooses to use this capability, the stunned specimen is automatically restrained and removed from the game. Cases, the restraint capability of pod may only be used to restrain stunned specimens. Any number of stunned specimens may be restrained in a pod in the same phase. Restraint capability of a pod is used once per phase to restrain as many stunned specimens as occupy the pod during the phase. All stunned specimens occupying the same pod need not be restrained. The crew member need not restrain any or all of the specimens in a pod. It could restrain some and leave others free. Stunned specimens may be carried like tools between spaces. Can you control a ship? Control ship is a condition of victory in Wreck of the Pandora. Once control is established, the contents of all spaces are known to all crew members. Control is established only by restarting, not repairing the ship's major systems. These systems are comp, nav, power, con, and viral. A crew member which occupies the con, comp, or nav spaces, or who is using the comp space through the use of the com, com may attempt to restart the ship's systems. If all five major systems are at a level four functioning or higher, it has rolled on the results in index to the current level of each system of the restart on the restart table. If the die roll number falls within the numerical span necessary, all systems are immediately restarted. They are raised to level nine functioning. Control of the ship is immediately established. If the die roll does not fall within the proper span of any of the five systems, attempt fails and all five systems are reduced to levels. Note, a system which is ship system down may be repaired. Restart may only be attempted once per phase during phases in which all five systems are at level four or higher. Cases, one is added to the die roll whenever a restart is attempted via the comp pod. Two is added to the die roll whenever a restart is attempted from the nav pod. Cold shutdown, Pandora is designed to shut down completely in the event of major damage to its most important systems. As the game progresses, players may become involved in a race to repair major systems and gain control of the ship before a cold shutdown takes place. When the status of the major systems is discovered, the discovering player finds out the extent to which the cold shutdown procedure has progressed. If either power or enviro is found to be at a level 4 or less, the cold shutdown is in progress. The level of the system, power and viral, which is lower, indicates the extent to which the procedure is in effect. Let's apply the level of the lower of these two systems by and place the cold shutdown marker in the box corresponding to that number on the cold shutdown display. At the end of each game turn thereafter, the cold shutdown marker is moved one box to the left. When the marker reaches the end of the track, the ship is completely shut down and may not be restarted. When only one system level, either power and viral, is known, Cold shutdown may be presumed to be in progress if that system is at least is at level four or lower. If the other system is later found to be at a lower level than the first system, the cold shutdown marker is moved to cord with the level of the second system. Cases, the movement of the cold shutdown marker along the cold shutdown display is only halted at the end of the phase in which all systems are restarted and at full functioning. How to win? 
In order to win the game, the ship must be in control at the end of a full game turn, and the following conditions must be met. All hull breaches must be sealed and all exterior locks closed. All specimens in the game must be restrained or dead. It is impossible to win the game if Pandora reaches Cold Shutdown. The game immediately ends when the ship reaches Cold Shutdown and all crew members and specimens are dead. Procedure. Once the game ends in any manner except with the death of all crew members, the players total up points for successfully engaging in game activities. The player who has accumulated the most points wins. In solitaire games, the player wins if he is still alive at the end of the game. Cases, the player who successfully restarts the ship's major systems receives 25 victory points. The player who restrains, restrains or kills a specimen receives a random number of victory points for doing so. A die is rolled for each specimen and number of victory points equal to the die roll. Number is awarded to the player who restrained that specimen. If the specimen was killed by the player instead of being restrained, the player is awarded only half value. The total value of all, each of, of all of each crew member's attributes is subtracted from his victory point total. A crew member who dies during a multiplayer game can win if his victory point total is higher than each of the other players. And then there are a little more back around Pandora and his crew and game design credits, game design, James Dunnigan, physical systems graphics, Redmond A. Simonson, game development, David James Ritchie, rules editing, Brady Hessel. Let's come through setup here, which is shown on the page one. The 21 pod markers are mixed and placed face down in the map, one marker per pod, so all them in these different pods, seven per each of the three levels. Then the 21 tools and 10 specimens mixed together and placed in a big container. Here we got a mix of the tools, bots, and specimens. Each player selects a crew counter. So you can do up to five players and it differs by you know, basically how many phases you do. Um, you know, one for each player course. I'll also be doing solitaire. And I'll go with uh, CO Stroph with his movement marker and status marker. Two dice rolled to determine the placement of the crew member. The first day indicates the deck. One to two is A. Three, four, B, five, six, C. So he's on A. Second is the placement pod. Six. So he's going to start pod six. Level A. Then we'll determine his uh, attributes. So I'm figuring out Stroff's attributes. One die is rolled in connection with the attribute table to determine crew member repair and weight ratings. So here's the attribute table. Repair, six. Level four. Weight rating, two. At level one, two dice to determine the Imperial Shield stamina important speed ratings. Impair five, three, shield eight, six. Port eight results in a six. And speed two results in a speed of one. Stamina nine. which results in a 7. And stamina is kept track of here in the crew status display. So we'll start play here. First turn. So movement, he's going to stay right here because there's a pod. Then I'll do a discovery check. 
old dice. So on one, one to three, there's discoveries, and you get that number as you rolled. Four, five, or six, there's not. So I'll just randomly take out of here two items. Put them face up. Got a turbo laser and a scanner. And then also turn over what the pod is. The power pod. Since the power pod is in that room, then we determine the the status, the level of the power. Six. Level four. Then you can acquire a couple items. So the scanner has a weight of two, turbo laser has a weight of three, and he has a the CO has a a port of six, so he can carry five. So first of all you check out the status of them. Seven. So the turbo laser is that yellow? You'll indicate that of the side face not be what its status is. Turbo laser is yellow. Scanner. Eight. Again referring up here. That's also status yellow. So bad news since he discovered that the power was four or less, it's at four. Cold shutdown has already started. So you take that level, multiply it by five, and start the cold shutdown at that level. So I'm already racing as the clock. And then he can He can try to repair equipment. He's got the scanner or turbo laser. They're both in yellow. He'll try to repair the turbo laser. The CO's repair level is four. So we look here. And uh, roll a D6. Three. No effect. He, if he would have gotten a 4, he would have repaired it, but no. Move stun markers. There's none of those. Then I'll move to the next turn. So since there's a cold shutdown going on at the end of the turn, you move it down one, so it's down to 19. Then we'll start the next turn here. Of course, keeping track of the ship status. Display here, I got the power level listed here. Then movement discovery. You can move one. So he's carrying these two items with him. The scanner and the turbo laser, which are both damaged. He can move one, so he'll go here. Do discovery check. It's fourth, so there's nothing there. Reaction, there's no specimens to react. Acquisition, there's nothing to acquire. Equipment phase, so he wants to try to repair some items again. Again, he'll try to repair the turbo laser. His on his attributes, his repair is four. So we go to the four here, and he rolls a four, which means he's able to repair it one step. So the turbo laser is fully functional now, which is nice. There's no stun removal. Then move cold shutdown down. So again, he's racing against the clock. Then we'll go to the next turn. Move up here. It's a pod, so we get to see what that is. It's the Enviropod. We'll see what uh, what its level is. Six. So it's also at a level four. And with the cold shutdown, it's the you know, minimum of, of those two. So um, 
that was also power was also at four. So, and if the Enviro had been like three instead of four, you would have knocked down the cold shutdown accordingly to account for that. I'm gonna do a discovery check. Six, nothing there. Tune equipment. This time it'll try to repair the scanner. Yes, he's been successful in that as well because he has a repair strength of four, so he's able to prove that. So they're both fully functional. He normally could have tried to use his scanner to see what's in the next room, but he's already checked there, so we can't check there anymore. And actually what I'm gonna do to indicate that the rooms have already been checked, I'll just put a, a marker there. Didn't say that in the rules, but it makes sense to do that. So I'll move out here again. So this is a new turn, so we're moving the uh, cold shutdown down. And there's still no specimen bots, there's no reaction, there's no acquisition to do their um, equipment phase. In the, uh, in the back of the rule book there's this aid with the attribute display that um, shows you know the what the different tools do and which is handy. Nothing repair. End of that turn. Next turn. So, movement. He'll go in here, do a discovery check. One. So, randomly draw one item. Turns out to be the specimen Mary. So now that a specimen's did, been discovered, there's a chance it may react. So first of all, whenever you use certain the attributes required of the, the specimen, you have to roll for their values. You roll a couple dice and then you do the modifiers based on the levels here. So for reaction, you need to know the intelligence and aggression. So the modifier for intelligence is, you know, plus three. So six plus three, nine. And we go up to the table here, which gives it a HP level of seven. Indicate that. Then aggression. So the modifier for that is zero. Nine plus zero. Again, level seven. So then based on those values then you go to the reaction table. And so the intelligence is seven. Aggression is seven. Roll of dice. Eight. So at a score of eight, at a roll of eight, the specimen's gonna attempt to kill Stroff. So we'll go to combat. So the specimen's the attacker here. So now we need to know the impair rating, because it's gonna be his impair rating versus the shield rating of the player. So the impair is with the third modifier here. Two dice, 10. So quite powerful, he's got a attribute of eight for impair. Indicate that. And then it's the impair versus the shield. And the shield for Stroff is six, so it's a Eight minus six plus two here. Roll dice. Five. Which is one. Number of levels which the object the impaired attack loses. So we'd lose one. 
So Lane's going to do one, and it's kind of a simultaneous, like they're both fighting. So to do that, while that happens, the um, then you also reverse it, and you have the defenders impair versus the attacker's shield. So it's a way of they're doing simultaneous combat. So because of that, we need to know the shield rating for Mary. And since there's a, a, a shaded one here, that means it's a minus one to the die roll. Eight, minus one, seven. Go up here. So they have a shield of five. So the simultaneous, now we look at, so then it's a, so Stroff has a, he's got an impair of three, which is not super great, but he is going to use his turbo laser. And since his turbo laser has an impair of nine, so instead of doing hand-to-hand -hand combat, of course he's using his turbo laser. So he's got a, a nine impair using his turbo laser versus the five shield of Mary. So it's a plus four. We'll die. And that's also a one, so they both take one damage. So the damage, he takes uh, one loss to his stamina then. And losses to the specimen are incurred by reducing their shield rating. I mean, I'll update the attributes for that, but I can also keep track of that on a status display, knowing that this is the shield rating of Mary. I'll move it down to four from five. And he doesn't have anything to, to pick up, so now that he's in the equipment phase, he's, Stroff is going to attack. Same procedure. So he's got his impair, which is, you know, nine of the turbo laser versus the shield of Mary, which now is down to four, so it's plus five. Six. Pretty big hit. Two damage to Mary. I'll indicate that's going to move down. But then simultaneous, um, before that's applied, Mary will, will go with a impair of eight versus the shield of six, so a plus two, three. So does one hit knock the uh, stamina down? And then stun removal, cold shutdown phase, move that down. So and he would like to do he'd like to do scan over here, but apparently they can't do any other activity other than combat. But if he were to use a scanner he could use that here. But and then he doesn't want to get bogged down here, but his speed is only one, and next turn he's gonna to try to get away, but we'll find out what the speed is next turn of Mary and if it's greater than one he's gonna have trouble getting away. So hopefully that gives you a bit of sense of how the play goes. So that's the wreck of the BSM Pandora from SBI in 1980. Got the box version, there's also an Aries magazine version. Much to like about it. Let it uh, so it goes with the voyages, the BSM Pandora as well, and I believe in General Magazine there's a campaign where you can do them together. Although apparently to do that, it's uh, you need you produce more counters that represent all the options in Voyage of Pandora, so, which can be done. Um, like I said, a lot to like about it. It's nice that it can be played, you know, solitaire or multiplayer. And if you do multiplayer, it's basically the same rules as far as the phases. You just have more more players doing the phases, which makes it pretty straightforward. I like the, the presentation of it on display. 
it was very well done. I do like the colors and um, colors remind me of other games they do, like Rescue from the Hive and other games where it's kind of got bright colors like that. It seems to work well. I always like it when all the really information needs here. You do need to maintain a you know attribute display sheet, which is you know okay. It'd be it'd be handy if those characteristics were sometime somehow here in the sheet, but I guess they had to you know space manage it properly. Mm -hmm. But the ones that that change over time, um, you know stamina is tracked on the sheet here. Uh, and there's some time urgency. It goes against the clock once it starts doing the cold shutdown. You have all sorts of various weapons and kits you can use different you know specimens you're combating against a lot of tactics and strategies involved there it seems a bit of a challenge to win because I got cold shutdown happening pretty quickly and was getting engaged in combat so it'd be challenged but you know, that's okay um, different reactions and that control how the specimens work, different options for tools. So I like it quite a bit. It's kind of a, it's very unique. Um, so I think I'll, uh, I'll give this one an 8 out of 10. I'll definitely be playing it again. Thanks for your time.